Hi, I'm David Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I use R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, this week uh, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday project, which is a great project run by the R for Data Science online learning community. So I already know what I'm going to be analyzing this week. I saw it's, it's spoiled, and I'm really excited about this, and I'll tell you why. We'll be analyzing the New York City squirrel census. The reason I'm excited about this data is over the weekend, I was taking a walk with my wife, and she we saw a squirrel, and she actually commented that she'd seen an article, I, I don't remember where, about the New York City squirrel census, and that the data was available. And she said, do you think you could do one of your screencasts about the squirrel census data? And I said, um, I think it's amazing, maybe I can do it, even if it's not for Tidy Tuesday, I'll do a screencast just analyzing that data. And it turns out just a day, uh, two days later, uh, the squirrel census is the data that we're, they're um, analyzing for Tidy Tuesday. So, uh, Dana, this one's for you, and I'll be analyzing um, the New York City squirrel census data. Let's see. Um, I, I've not actually looked at the data yet. I just knew that it existed. I certainly have seen squirrels around uh, my, my own city of New York. And let's, let's download some data. All right, so um, NYC squirrels, that's CSV. Wow, that's a lot of variables we have about squirrels. I'm gonna start up this um, RMD, do library tidyverse. I like to do theme set, theme light. And then I like to do, um, and then I'll, have, I'll download my squirrel data. It's a lot of columns. All right, and look at our NYC squirrel data. We have locations, we have, um, so like a longitude and a latitude. Uh, looks like we have a zip, co zip code or zip codes. Uh, I like to know right away what the zip codes. Okay, so we only have four, we only have very little data that actually has a zip code. But most, a lot of the data does have long and lat. Uh, I do not know what, it, what is a hectare. It's a vaguely familiar word, but I have no idea. It's a unit of square measure. There squirrels. Okay, I'm gonna read through the, um, here it is. Ah, okay. So we have a longitude, a latitude. Every squirrel sighting is a, um, is a, where it is a hectare ID, a shift, which is AM, whether it occurred in AM or PM, uh, date, a, um, and a hectare squirrel number. Okay, so, uh, Hector grid used to count the park area. Are all of these from Central Park or one particular park? I'm not sure. It doesn't say. I haven't found out yet. Okay, we um. Do you have the time? All right. Adult or juvenile? Uh, primary fur color and a highlight fur color. That's super cute. And then we have a uh a combination of primary and highlight color. Um. You know, I did my PhD at, at Princeton, and there they actually have black squirrels, which are really pretty rare. Um, uh, my understanding is uh, is the squirrels were brought from um, another country by some, by by a Princeton alumni who who brought both orange and black squirrels. The orange squirrels didn't make it, but the black ones did. And you don't find a lot of the black ones in in, Amer in America, but we do have black primary and highlight fur colors. Okay, so maybe there are uh, black squirrels in New York. I don't really see them. I feel like I usually see like gray squirrels or I guess cinnamon squirrels. Let's see. All right. Was it running, chasing, climbing? Was it eating? Was it foraging? What other activities was it? Oh, this is, this is going to be a real, really fun data set. Was it quaing? Wow. Today I learned that a qua is an elongated vocal communication. Was it moaning? Was it Flag, flagging its tail, so whipping motion used to exaggerate its size. Was it, uh, this doesn't, this might be a bug, but it looks like these two tail flags and tail switches. Um, yeah, this makes it look like they're the same um, documentation. That might be a bug. Uh, was it approaching the human? Was it indifferent or was it running from? Three interactions. Okay, so one thing is like we're seeing combinations of some sound, some behaviors, some, uh, some kind of some audible noises and then some uh, tail behaviors and these three are really are really like how does it interact with a human um, that long zip code does not seem very useful community district because it's only got these few uh, do we have community districts uh, sorry for that that's a very sensitive escape key uh, 
community districts. No, it looks like they're all District 19 borough boundaries. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get much out of these. It's always four mm. city council districts. Uh, all mostly 19 and police precinct is, is gonna be mostly one value. Again, I don't know if these are all uh, Central Park or something like that. Um, if they're all from one park in New York. Oh, well, it's this is really fun. Uh, I'm really just just kind of excited about the data. Uh, I'm asking questions about where it is. So I'm going to start with our latitude and longitude. I'm going to ask a question of, um, let's see, uh, x is going to be our longitude and y is our latitude if we're doing a map. And I'm just going to start with Geom Point. I've got to guess that this is uh, Central Park. Um, it's it. No wait. No wait. No, yeah. Okay, I've got to guess this is Central Park. It's definitely just a guess. Uh, and the idea being that it is a perfectly, it's a square or you got a kind of a parallelogram-like shape, sort of a rectangle. Um, so it's it's not multiple parks, so it would have been like multiple kind of shapes. It's not even Manhattan, that would not be as nicely square. This is, um, oh, this is the, the lake, the reservoir. Okay, so then I'm pretty sure this is Central Park. Because uh, then, the, yeah, then you have the reservoir here, and that explains why we're not seeing like lots of, we're not seeing lots of different boundaries or whatever, because they're all really all in um in the park. Uh, okay, now I have a, a um a question, which is um these are located in hectares, so what I'm going to do is aggregate by the hectare. So I'm going to do group by hectare. Summarize. I'm going to take the average uh, latitude and longitude within each hectare. Uh, I don't know if there are, there probably are multiple within each. Latitude, longitude, n is the number, and then we say long, lat, number of squirrels. I'm gonna use GG theme, there we go. GG themes has a theme map, I think. Is there? No, who, who, who has theme map? Well, I'm not going to use theme map. I'll just use theme void. Uh, I don't really need the um, the dimensions here. Later, I might I might fit in some. Um, uh, later, I might I might get like a what do you call it? Some saw, put this on on an actual map of New York. Uh, it doesn't feel that important yet. Right now, mostly we're looking at our um, yeah we look at Central Park and here's the number of squirrels we see across each. Okay, and uh, what we see here is each one of these is a hectare, uh, and that tells me I can make like a like it, I can like talk about average behaviors at the hectare level. Uh, so if I want to know something like where are the brown squirrels, where are the um the cinnamon squirrels, I could I could maybe work on that at a hectare level. Um, I'm gonna call this by hectare. I'm really gonna keep returning to this graph. Oops. Oh, I need to call it by hectare. And I'll call this NYC squirrels. Okay, and we have the number of squirrels uh, seen in each hectare. What period of time is this? How many, how many squirrels are there in here? All right, and mm-hmm. So three thousand squirrels. It's not. It's not. It's worth noting that's not like a like an enormous number of squirrels. So we we have to kind of keep that in mind. Okay. I want to know some things about the color. Uh, if I start with color notes. Oh wow. There's lots of uh of notes. Notes can looks like can be kind of anything. Uh, white belly, white tail, all these things. Beauty. Okay. That is really cute. That we have these volunteers keeping track of the squirrels that are saying squirrels are beauty. Uh, and what I have is primary, what I was trying to think of is primary for a color. So if I say uh, NYC, I'm going to get back to the hectares in a second. And I'm going to say NYC squirrels count primary for a color. Yeah, what we see is most of the time we just see gray um, with some cinnamon and a little bit of black. Uh, and some are missing. Uh, okay, and what if I do our secondary? Uh, what is it called? It's called highlight fair color. 
Most squirrels are missing the highlight. Their highlights can be uh, gray or white. Okay, hmm. I'm deciding on some things in terms of how I'm gonna visualize this. One issue is that if I if I look up through here, but what are the what are the most um, gray squirrels? I, I'm guessing it's kind of just gonna be, I mean, everywhere in the gray squirrels are going to be the most common. But I want I, what I want what I really want to ask here is what um, is are there patterns of colors in terms of their territory? I want to say is this the area where you find uh, more cinnamon squirrels? This the area where you find more black squirrels? Uh, I don't, um, here's, so here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to take my Hector and I'm going to have one called, um, have a value which is PCT gray, which is mean primary fur color is gray, NARM equals true. We're going we're gonna to skip any of the ones that aren't um, gray. And now we can see like, uh, okay, so this one has like, Within this hectare, only 25% of the squirrels were gray. Within this one, 75% were. Again, the numbers are pretty low here, so we might, um, if I take this and I say size equals n, I might want to say filter n. Only the hectares are at least 20 is not, 20 is not enough. Uh, sorry, it's too many. I'm going to start here and say fill. Uh, do we think we're going to see a um, any kind of pattern? I kind of doubt it. Oh, uh, not fill color when it's a point. So one of the first issues, hmm, yeah. One of the first issues here is that if I filter for only um, hectares where you've seen at least 10 squirrels, uh, we're not going, we're going to see like, um, uh, when there's not really enough. Uh, there's not as many at least. Uh, and we can actually see like, um, you know, the downtown squirrels, that is interesting. The downtown squirrels look like they might be uh, less likely to be gray, more likely to be our other colors of cinnamon or, um, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, of cinnamon or black uh, downtown. But that's just kind of a maybe situation. I'm actually going to try plotting. What if I tried uh, only putting this on one dimension? We're actually say by hectare plot. Uh, filter and filter will filter first. We'll say filter and it's 10, greater than 10. And I'll say what's the um, uh, as a function of your uh, latitude as you go more north, do, which this doesn't six point doesn't go exactly more north, it kind of goes looks like it goes sort of more north and east, but um, we'll say north uh, and uh, here we go geome point. What is the percent gray? And I'm going to throw in a G, hmm, GM smooth. Throw in a smoothing curve. Eh. Are they less gray? Lower? It's a little bit hard to tell. There's some. There's plenty that are 100%. Okay, I'm going to test for it um, uh, more rigorously, and we're actually going to do logistic regression where we say. Instead of PCT, or along with PCT gray, I need to say N, N gray is PCT gray times N. I can round it just to make it a, well, it's already, it's already fine. So I'll say this, and then I'll do GLM. We'll be doing logistic regression to say, uh, are, uh, are, are squirrels more likely to be gray if they're higher north in the park? Uh, this is a very unsophisticated spatial um, uh, spatial statistics method. Um, I'm not spatial statistics is not really my area, so I'm just um, uh, I'm just playing a, a little bit uh, with it to see is this more than chance. Um, what I want to ask is uh, this is how I do logistic regression, where it says C bind n gray by uh, by the number that aren't gray and minus n gray explained by our latitude, data equals dot. Uh, huh? What did I do here? If I said, oh, oh, right, yes, I have to say family equals binomial to say it's logistic regression. I'm going to get my two columns, one of successes, one of a failure. And I do need to do round this. All right, yeah, I did need to do round. And I've piped this into summary.
could have used brooms tidy as well. Okay, so it does look like you're more like squirrels are more likely to be gray the more north uh, they are. Uh, so that's uh, if it's based on on the assumptions of logistic regression. That uh, I find that from a um, positive estimate with a uh, very significant p-value. Okay, uh, so squirrels may be more likely to be gray the higher north in the park you go and more likely to be cinnamon or uh, just hit me, I'm, uh, I need to remove problem is if, if they're not, uh, it just hit me, this is not exactly accurate for those missing colors. I'm actually gonna go ahead and for by Hector, Hector say filter not is in a primary fur color, otherwise this really gets into trouble. And uh, now I can run it again, it's actually a little bit less, a little bit less significant, still significant, so it wasn't a big deal. But uh, what I realized is something was missing that PCT gray would have actually been out of that instead of out of the, um, uh, would have been out of the subset that, that weren't uh, real. So that that's, uh, hmm. Look at me, going to all this work, when it hits me, I could have uh, done a little simpler on the original data. Hmm. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna keep that in mind for other logistic regressions that I do. That is, I could have done it on the by squirrel data instead of, instead of the by hectare data. Either way, we've seen at least one spatial trend. Okay, how about your um, highlight for a color? I wonder, are there, um, is there a spatial association there? How many highlight for colors do we have? Too many. Uh, lots and lots and lots. I can always FCT uh, lump them. Some are cinnamon and white, uh, excuse me. But instead of fur color, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm really kind of interested in what are our, our, um, our behaviors? How many skits, how many approach, how many are indifferent, how many run? Now these are logical. Okay, most don't approach. How many are indifferent? Half are indifferent. And a quarter run away, um, something like that, okay? And then some don't, uh, let's see, so we have approaches, indifferent. I wonder, are these uh, exclusive? Not exactly. So most common is ones that are indifferent. Then ones that do that have false for all three. Then you have some that run from, some that approach, some that get both indifferent runs from or approaches and runs from, maybe does both, uh, but those are relatively rare. Okay, mostly I think it's worth treating these uh, kind of separately. Um, though note that note that they're he highly neg uh, highly negatively correlated with each other. If you're in one of them, you're usually not in the other categories. Uh, so we could ask a question like, is the squirrel indifferent um, to you as a function of various uh, components of it? Uh, so if I want to say, is a squirrel indifferent? I could ask that question based on some piece of information. I could ask uh, which is more... Uh, um, Likely now, uh, is a squirrel indifferent to human? I could ask that spatially. Maybe I should. Okay, um, as a function of where it's seen in the park, is a squirrel more, more or less likely to be indifferent? Now, note that there are some confounding factors. A big confounding factor here is, um, presumably these are measured by a person, and the person might be, uh, or, or a set of volunteers, and the people could, uh, could be different than ones who, who, who explore the, the north side of the park, the south side of the park. So if I say the squirrels are more aggressive in the north side of the park, don't, um, we're not going to take that for granted. Uh, that could be a confounding factor here. We don't really have the data to, to, to say that for sure. But I'm going to ask a logistic regression question. I'm going to say, approaches is so rare. Run away from, runs away. Uh, does a squirrel run away? Nah, it does, yeah, so I'll ask that. Does a squirrel run away as a function of, let's say, latitude, the latitude within the park? Um, and say that, and data equals NYC squirrel. And we say uh, family equals binomial. It's 
runaway or is it a summary? Uh, what was the, the column called? Runs from. Okay. Wow. Uh, I did not expect the shift to be that dramatic. I'm actually going to put that in our by hectare and let's make a quick graph of it. Um, what does that exactly look like? PCT runs from equals mean, hmm. You know, the more things I do mean, I do a mean on, the more I can do, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna new, new by hectare. And I'm going to do it with summarize at. Summarize at is really helpful because I want, if I want to know the mean of a lot of columns, I can say summarize at the following variables. Um, I want the mean of our long, of our let. I'll get back to the other ones. And now I have the average long and let, but I can also get the average runs from. I can also get the average. Uh, oh, I need to. Um, problem is, I actually am missing a total here, and I'd like to have a total, but I'll get to that in a second. Average and different. And uh, I can keep. I could keep adding to that. Uh, one thing I'm going to do to get a total in here is group by the hectare. Then now I'm going to, I'm going to do I'm going to add count hectare, and then group by both hectare and n. That means I can keep our n in there, even though technically it's a grouping variable. Uh, summarize that can be a little frustrating. I don't know of a way to add, like I just want the, some, the means of a bunch of them, but also the total. And here I can just uh, ungroup after my summarize that. So I can say, here we go. Uh, here are the hectares and here's the percentage that run away, percentage that are indifferent. And now I can plot, uh, create my plot where I say, um, PCT, oh, uh, run, uh, runs from. Is there a spatial trend here? It's weird. Uh, I saw a very clear pattern with regard to the latitude here. I don't, um, I don't see it as much. It was a positive trend. It was suggesting that, that squirrels were more likely to run away uh, the more north in the park they were. Uh, Maybe I just have a, um, let me see, let me try filtering 10. You know, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at this for a bit and I can see the area where squirrels are most likely to run uh, and I'm going to fix up some of my scales. I'm gonna say scale. Uh, one thing I like is I actually really like scale fill gradient two, low equals and I'm like low blue, high red, um, and mid point equals 0.3. Uh, scale color gradient too, my bad. Uh, I'm also gonna throw in labels. Ah, now you're really starting to see it. Maybe we just really weren't picking a gradient that um, highlighted this difference. I'm gonna say mid equals pink. Red is likely to run away. Ooh, we really see there is a region here where squirrels really are pretty likely to run away. Uh, labels equals scales percent. And we'll add in some labels. We'll say, uh, I don't need an X and a Y, but I do need a fill, a color, I should say, is percent of squirrels run, that run. And there's really kind of no question that, um, and uh, do I need a, yeah, I'll say size, number of squirrels. So number of squirrels spotted. We can see, I know the name of this, this this area. No, I don't. I thought, I was hoping I, I could remember it. There's kind of a big hill here. Um, what's the, the name of it? Well, it's, um, it's an area within uh, Central Park and it looks like maybe this has an, is an area where the squirrels are unusually likely to run away. Downtown, they're somewhat less likely uh, to run. And uh, let me throw in a title. This is a kind of a, a neat graph. Uh, squirrels in the Northwest are more likely to run away. Corner of Central Park. Squirrels in the Northwest corner of Central Park are more likely to run away. I'm gonna want to put this on a map. 
Uh, I really had a, I had a good time already um, looking at this, but even just like showing this is uh, on like white space, I have kind of an idea of this. Again, I'm pretty certain this is Central Park, though I never didn't actually, yep, I didn't actually see that description. Um, but uh, yeah, but we're, we're uh, just based on the location of the, the, si the shape of the park and location of the, of the water, but we're gonna find out for sure. We're gonna load in GG Map. I think it's called GG Map. I don't think I have it installed. Let me see. GG, is it GG Map? Yes, am I going to need API keys? Because I don't have stuff set up on this. Uh, uh, this is my uh, new work computer. I don't. I'm, I'm not terribly well set up. And sure, let's install from source. I like things to work. And uh, library GG Map. Okay. And let's remind ourselves how this works. Mm-hmm. All right, what I'm gonna do is set up my data first and say by Hector. Now here's my regular ggplot. I'm gonna give it a shot at ggmap and I wonder if I need to set up a whole API thing. We're gonna find out the hard way. ggmap um, AES. So I have used this before, it has been a while. Uh, so I'm gonna say geom point uh, and say as long lat color equals runs from okay hdf uh, get map oh boy get map oh ho all right so this is maybe the first step See where I say um, to get a map and I pick vaguely remembering this a longitude and a latitude. Okay, well, I want to pick a longitude and a latitude that are just about where my hectares are. So if I take a look at like, where's my first one? Pull long, pull lat, and I'm going to use those for a moment. So I'm going to say, um, Location, see, lawn is this, lat is, I probably don't need that many digits, but I'd like a couple, lat is 40.77. Ha, all right. Should I try registering one? Ah. You get to watch me uh, try setting this up for a moment. I'm kind of nervous that if I do, then I have all my, goo am I going to stick some, um, Okay. All right, I am not, I'm gonna make a decision not to set this up during this screencast. Uh, the two reasons are I don't know that, it's, uh, that it could take a lot of time, I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't want at some point to show an API key on a screencast that someone could then see and then and, uh, maybe it will be a security um, vulnerability for myself. Uh, hopefully that, that's, that's acceptable. Um, you know, I do have, there are other ways to show a map of New York. Uh, I wonder something. Central Park shape file. Oh ho, okay. This might be an approach that I want to use. Okay, so it looks like someone's sharing. Open street map. What I want to do is download a shape file. It's like a, um, a quantitative variation of a version of a map. Uh, and can I download this whole thing? Central and Prospect Parks. All right. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure I can read from this shape file. Uh, but I want to know how. And I'm actually gonna, going to do something. I'm going to rely on my own. Uh, I'm going to lie my own code. I'm 
I'm going to go back to a, a previous analysis I've done on trees. Uh, this I actually did live in front of an audience in, um, for, for uh, Jared Lander's New York uh, Open Statistical Programming Meetup. And I'm going to remind myself how I read in a shape file. Here it is. Okay. I'm going to delete Prospect Park. I just don't even want it to pop up. And then it uh, might get in the way. And I'm going to try using the SF package. Prospect Park is another park in New York, um, but I'm going to be focusing on Central Park today. So I often do this. I'll go back to previous analyses I've done. And, um, ooh, Geome SF. That's going to be... That's going to be a hoot. Uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is uh, is try is see what happens if I do read. Oh, library SF. Read SF. Desktop central. No, it's downloads. Yes. Love that. Uh, okay, what we have then is um, here we go. Geom SF, yeah. And if I, so, what what this does is read in a tidy. Um, what's the name of the of this type of a? Uh, it's a uh, of this type of object. It's an SF and a tib and a tibble diff diff object. And this is really great for plotting uh, maps. Shapefile is like um, here gonna show Central Park SF. Here I'm gonna show what does that look like. Well, I can do ggplot central park sf and then geom sf. Fingers crossed. Here we go. This shows uh, actually, it looks like a lot of paths around uh, the park. So there, this is the park. There's that lake I was talking about. And, um, and then we have all these paths laid on top of it. Um, we can, I didn't actually know that this is also showing the surrounding um, region. I wonder if there's a way to tell it. Let's see. I wonder if there's a way to tell it. I only want. Let me see. Uh, if I take, if I took this, um, this Central Park SF, and I count bicycle. Some yes, some no, some designated, uh, and mostly missing data. Okay, I'm not finding it yet. All right, but at the very least, what I have here is a um, is one kind of map of um, uptown, uh, uptown uh, New York City, uh, uptown Manhattan. And what I'm going to do is plot that, and then I'm going to throw in my regular geom point uh, with a geom runs from chain and he, but here I'll need to say data equals by hectare and now that I know this I'm actually going to move this code up to here drop the GG map don't need it anymore and I'm actually going to start with a um, here we go data equals by hectare move the AES into the geom point that's what I'm visualizing and start with a central park SF ggplot. Here, I'm actually going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to do it as ggplot this geom sf data equals central park shape file. Uh, so I'm passing this data. I don't need to repass this. Um, and let's see how this looks. Here we go. Now we have a visualization of um, this of Central Park with our points laid on top of it. Uh, how can I have some thoughts as to how we're going to be? Um, uh, how can I say I only want uh, I only want what's in this park? I have. Um, I'm going to take a, a little bit more of a look. <coughs> Pardon me at the shape file, and. Um, what we have is we have count footway. So you've got these yet yeah, mostly missing, then some sidewalk crossing. How about foot and then lanes? I just wonder if say mostly almost everything has been missing. Uh, okay. Well, what I'm going to do is visualize a couple. Ooh, I know. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be visualizing a couple of these. Um, uh, these are ooh, lanes. 
Oh, there's how many lanes there are. If I said filter not is in a bicycle, or I'll, I'll leave in the bicycle, but I'm gonna say, um, geom, I'm gonna say, take this, ggplot it, geom, and geomsf, but I'm gonna say, color equals footway. Most of it's gonna be, mm, Oh, AES color equals for white. Most of it's going to be missing, uh, but I'm interested in what does it highlight. Okay, there's some, it's not terribly useful. There's some sidewalks, there's some things that pass through the city. Uh, what about bicycle? Hmm. Bunch of yeses. I'm just not thrilled with it. Uh, all right, how, then how am I going to say I only want to keep the ones in a particular region? Am I going to say that? I might not, uh, because it might take a little bit of, of effort. I, I don't actually, I'm not terribly uh, sophisticated in terms of working with SF files. Um, ooh, what's this about? Why, well, I, I can't remember, I, I, you know, when I was, um, SF, oh, that looks way better. I don't know even know what the difference is, but I'm going to throw that into this one. Oh, but actually, this is the one I want. Though. Here it is. Ah, okay, that looks that looks pretty good. Uh, not perfect. Again, I'm um, I want it would be kind of cool to to drop the rest of the of the city, but this is really um pretty interesting. What we're seeing is like this is the the neighborhood, the region, um where the squirrels run away. Okay. That was some experience of, um, of downloading a shapefile and creating a plot out of it. Uh, Squirrels in the, um, and using, using a Ge uh, Geom SF. I wonder are there any other Central Park shapefiles that we might be, uh, want to take a look at. Thank you to the, the person on Reddit who downloaded it. Are there any other, um, I am having a hard time. I'm gonna refresh. Where's the zoom? Ah, oh, there it is. Well, there's a neighborhood. The Great Hill is kind of the neighborhood where the squirrels are always running away. Um, other than that, I, I don't know too much about this. I wonder what's here. Is that a um, entrance? All right, cool. Uh, okay, and there's the Jack and Kennedy Onassis Reservoir where we see no squirrels and so on. All right, so that was how we do a visualization of plot. Uh, let's look at a couple of other things we might want to take a look at by a um, uh, by, by location like this. Again, I really do wonder if it's, this is confounded that it was always one person measuring this. Um, so then, so then, that is definitely something I'm wondering about. Okay. Uh, all right, I can graph almost anything by hectare. Uh, now, eating, f running, chasing, climbing, eating, foraging, other activities. First, I'm going to take a quick look at my other activities. Those all sound really cute. What are, are there common other activities? Eh, digging, but that's only 19 uh, squirrels. Okay. But uh, I might want to look at all these, uh, our um, run, chase, climb, eat, forage ones. Uh, what I can do is actually say, if I said select ends with ing, are those are, there are our activities, bingo. And instead of select, I'm going to be gathering and say gather activity um, and then say doing and then ends with ing and now filter for doing. I don't care about the ones that are false. And now I can count my activities. I just wanted to take a look where I'd say, okay, the most common behavior is foraging, fall by eating. Some of them are chasing. Uh, they are all much more common than an activity like digging or sitting that, that are other optional activities. So we can focus mostly on these. Uh, I want to do that gather quickly so that we could, um, most so we, so we could treat each of these um, together uh, as we wanted to. I'm also going to add this to summarize that to say ends with ing and get an, an average of all of these. 
and now I can say, um, you know, any, anything I wanted to plot uh, on here, I could. Should I create a shiny visualization where you can choose what you want to plot? Yeah, why not? I don't. It's actually been a while since I did a shiny visualization. I have about twenty minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and make a um, make a little bit of an explorer where I can say, pick one of these variables and then see what the um, see the spatial uh, uh, nature of it. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, what I'll do is go to new file. Uh, what is it? It's shiny web app. I want to be a, a single. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, new on this machine. What I'm kind of thinking is we'll do a visualization, uh, have an, an option where someone can select which of these variables they want to, uh, which of these dimensions they want to visualize, and then and then just create this um, ggplot. Something I love about Shiny and ggplot is like uh, you, is anything you can plot, you can put into an interactive plot. I also might set a threshold on that minimum, that n greater than or equal to 10. Uh, I think it might not be, uh, maybe instead of n greater than or equal to 10, we want, um, uh, we, we want to let people set their own thresholds. Some might want to include, to have a higher threshold, see, have less noise in this kind of trend, and some might want uh, lower. But really, any of these that is our percentage could work, okay? I'm going to have a single file app called, um, let's see, called NYC Squirrels app. All right, normally I use shiny dashboard, but um, and Central Park Squirrels, and I'll start with, I will have a slider um, bin, say minimum squirrels, mac, add one to 30, I think 30 is the highest I, I want to set, min squirrels, and then I'll have a, a va what I was just mentioning was a value. Now let me prepare my data for I've got my prepared data, let's see, by hectare. Um, all right, and yeah, what I'll do is say is um, we'll start by setting up our uh, our options, our, um, our, we take by hectare, we remove hectare through lat, and we take the column names. Uh, what do you call it? Variable um, squirrel variables. These are my variables you can plot. I might want to hmm, string replace. Oh, I already got a string replace all. Replace my underscores with spaces and string to title. I just like it to be. Um, here it is. I uh, just like that just a little bit more, um, but I can't quite do that. I need to do squirrel variables display or name. Ah, here it is. Here's what I'm gonna do. I, I, I forgot this. I do names of squirrel variables are the same squirrel variables, but with some processing done. So now I've got this named vector. Oops. Now I've got this named vector. Uh, oops, did I say the pipe? Here we go. Uh, why was I doing that? Because I want to have a select input where I'll say select input and a variable, and we'll say variable, and choices are our squirrel variables. And park plot, we'll call it, and we'll say park plot render plot, and we'll put, do our visualization here. Notice I'm not putting in here any of the. Um, I'm just assuming you have by hectare in your global environment. Uh, that would not fly if I'm productionizing this, but I just want to show what the app would look like. And uh, here it is. I can remove this into here.
and create my by hack there here. All right. And now what I do is I take, I'm not even loading all the packages here. What I'll do is in our in my um, output, what I do is take my by hack there, filter for n must be greater than or equal to input dollar sign um, min squirrels. So only those that sh with, with at least this many. And then I'm going to use um, uh, create by ggplot. Just copy the whole thing. Uh, yep, and the difference is going to be here. Notice color equals runs from. I need to remind myself, I think that this will work. But I'm really not that uh, confident. I think if I do bang bang from R lang, it's going to um, uh, to read this. But I'm going to need to try a few. I, I'm sure I can get it to work. I just might need to try a few things. Um, and I'm not going to name our color because it's going to be a... Uh, I'm not gonna add a title. It's gonna be different depending on what the variable the user chooses to plot is. Okay, how's that for a first pass? Save, don't need to save it, but I'm gonna save it. All right, uh, discrete value, tenuous scale. Okay, um, input variable. First question. Print it as an input variable, and then I run it. All right, the run swim part works, but yeah, uh, this this didn't. What if I did sim from um, our lang of, of input variable, and then if I did bang bang var, I think that might be it. I'm uh, you're, you're catching me uh, mix getting mixed up on my um, my non-standard valuation. Uh, all right. Ah, there it is. Okay. Uh, I need to turn into a symbol and then um, bang, bang it. All right. So if I if I increase my threshold, very few points, basically almost none. I go all the way down to one. Kind of too many points. Uh, I kind of like that uh, minimum squirrels. I'm going to switch the order of these two because I, this is less important uh, than the actual variable. So I'm going to switch these two. Here it is. And you know what's interesting? I can do a, um, I could actually say here, paste percentage and the input variable. And I think it actually will look a little nicer to actually have something here where I say percentage runs from. I hmm, really wanted the name, but I can get back to that later. Uh, what percentage are indifferent? indifferent um, is it geographically associated well up here where many of the squirrels are running they're less likely to be indifferent all right what percentage are running are running away I thought that we said the percentage running I'm missing some oh wait running is different than run uh, run from here is my runs from definitely geographically associated with the um, north uh, west corner of the park Indifferent, not so much. Running, I don't think so. Maybe these two parts have, are, have squirrels that are more likely to be running. Where are they more likely to be chasing? Well, one thing this reminds me is that my midpoint is going to have to be uh, framed a little differently. What if I said the midpoint is going to be the median of our... Um, let me put this up here. Midpoint is median of by hectare... Uh, with my input variable, so I actually want to get like the, the the midpoint of it, uh, right? So then I have a different midpoint depending on my um, uh, on the variable I'm choosing. All right, we have our climbing. Why did I why did I set this up as shiny app? Because there's so much rep repeated code here. Um, in terms of I I want to plot it, do this all just when I'm just changing one variable. Like is it? I'm going to look at a climbing, eating, what? Seem a little more likely to be spotted eating in these in here than elsewhere? Maybe? Yeah. How about foraging? I wonder if there's a uh, correlation between neighbor areas where they seem to be eating and areas where they seem to be foraging. I'm not sure. All right. 
uh, but each of those are some of the visualizations that we can um, can do. I don't like this. Uh, this ah, this. Hmm. I feel like there's a lot of wasted uh, white space around the uh, around the plot, but that's all right. All right. Okay. There's a um. There's our visualization of um. Of some of squirrels. And, uh, did we have anything else we could have, um, do we have anything else within this, this squirrel data we can visualize? And we see squirrels kill this. The location, what was location? Is it different than Hector? A uh, ground planner above ground. Well, this will be actually a little, um, I think a little bit fun is I can start just with, um, oh, actually, no, I think this will be fun. Uh, presumably, does ground, does above ground mean that it's in a tree, or does it mean it's on a hill? Uh, what, if I look up my data dictionary, ooh, I totally missed all my um, cucks, quacks, quas, moans, tail flags, tail twitches situation. Um, and I grabbed, all right, why don't I grab those? I'll say, uh, in my runs from an indifferent, I didn't even include approaches. I didn't include approaches. I should. Uh, everything from cucks, cucking it, to indif to runs from, I'm interested in. So I'm going to do... Runs for, okay. And source it. Again, this file will not run on its own. It only works when you've already run this. But here's like, where do we see lots of um, cucking? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the midpoint here is at zero. That's actually something a little bit dangerous, is that, um, yeah, it's, even though I filtered it down, I, uh, I actually did this originally. Here we go. I'm going to fix this up. Uh, I took the median before filtering, and this will work a little bit better. A little bit, only a little bit. <laughs> uh, huh. Nope, didn't work better at all. Hmm. Or is it NA? Is that what I'm missing? Nope. It's just the median is zero. Even if I filter? Even if I filter? Yeah. All right. Cux might not be a good uh, one to graph. Quas, moans. Eh. These are not things I think they're too rare to really see spatial trends. Tail flags. Okay, what are the distributions of some of these? Well, let's take a look at our um, at our by hectare again. Uh, again, we, we the thing we could do to see this would be yeah, uh, would be if I gav if I took this and I gather everything from cucks to foraging, and I call it variable and value. I can say uh, variable. No, I can say value, geom histogram, and facet wrap it. I probably want to filter for, um, let's say, and at least 10 squirrels. Otherwise, we've got all that noise mixed in. But then it say split it down by variable. Yeah, we're seeing that there's a bunch of things, the cucks, the moans, the quas, where the median tends to be zero. If that's the case, just, um, just in general, we're not going to see amazing um, graphs out of this. It's like, where is it above zero as opposed to like seeing a whole spectrum kind of like we do with running or runs from or climbing or eating. So actually looking at all that, it's like, eh, I don't necessarily need that data in my um, in my uh, interactive visualization. So instead of Cox to runs from, I'm going to say approaches to runs from and the ing. And now if I run it again, yep, what percent approach, or even that is, is still too rare, but then what percentage are indifferent? 
What percentage run from you? More common here, yep, wait. Yeah, it's a different looking graph than I was having before. I wonder if midpoint's the if median is the right way to do the midpoint. What if I said mean? I'd like to also say na.rm equals true. Yeah, but that's not necessary. These are always true or false. I haven't seen missing data yet. I think it's a better looking graph. I'll use the average as the midpoint. Uh, average ends up being like 20%. Okay. Uh, and this is, kind of, but again, this is like the main spatial recognition thing we've, uh, spatial, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, spatial dependency, spatial um, ah, trend that we're, see, that we're seeing. Okay. So that was some analysis of looking at squirrels by their location within Central Park. Whew. If I knew uh, more about spatial statistics, I probably would run a model for each of these variables, see which depend on on the um, on uh, location, which don't. I don't. I just don't know enough for me. Um, and uh, I could do lots of logistic regressions where I say like, is this based on on longitude? Is it or, or is it dead? But um, but it's not gonna. It's uh, it is not gonna be gonna be really worth it. I think. Um, I think uh, I think I think it'd be better to hopefully some pe there are people out there that, that can do a lot with this um, location-based data and, and find some other interesting things. I have one. Let me see. Is there one anything else that I'm um, I'm interested in this data? We didn't do a lot. We could have looked at. Um, oh, I didn't even look at things like like age at all. Ooh, let me. Uh, hmm. Ooh, I wanna, I wanna add like, like this squirrel. Oh, I, I completely forgot the ground location. Okay, was it in? Oh, uh, yes. So the question is, was it in? Um, I think was it a tree or not? So let's include count. Uh, what is it called? It was called location. Okay, and um. I'm gonna count these as ground, the missing ones as ground plane. What I would do to include this is, in my by hector, is say, uh, let's see, mutate uh, above ground is, not is in a location, and location equals above ground. That way that NAs will look like they're not above ground. It doesn't end up making a big difference. And now my by hectare has our above ground too. And if I do my visualization, are there areas that will more likely be on, uh, in trees? Maybe. Hard to say. Just wanted to get that, put, put that one in there. Um, what about juvenile? What about age? I say always start with some counting. Nah, too many of them are adults. I think it's not even uh, not even really uh, worth it to me. Uh, okay, so what have we done uh, today? We learned about the um, first. I learned about the, uh, the the system of breaking down the um, uh, Central Park into hectares, and how uh, and how we can we can use that that um, aggregating by hectare to visualize our number of squirrels, that is, to finding the, aggregating them into one longitude and latitude, and something like a percent. Uh, we decide, we then, um, uh, we then realized there were some spatial trends, so we wanted to start making some graphs, uh, and, uh, and we, what, I, what I did was use summarize at to get percentages across a wide variety of, um, let me run this, to get percentages across a wide variety of, of, of metric of per hectare metrics. Uh, so here we have like out of 16 squirrels in this one, zero approached, 56% were indifferent, zero ran, run, ran from, and so on. And then once I made one graph of this, which we um, which we did by downloading the central um, park SF file, this uh, uh, shape file, um, once we got once we got this so that it wasn't just kind of graphing it on, on white space, but actually like kind of laying it onto a, a bit of a map of Central Park, we um, visual we 
visualized it and then put it into a really uh, a really um, low lift shiny app one with two variables uh, could have just done one and it would have been probably fine as well and then a um, and then a visualization uh, of, um, of, a, of that let the user actually choose which variable to um, uh, to plot so uh, that was um, NYC squirrels uh, some spatial uh, stuff, some shiny. Uh, I, had a, uh, I hope you had a great time. I certainly did. And I'll see you next week.